Blackstone, the magic detective. What are you doing, Rhoda? Setting up a shoe store? With all these shoes, you mean? Yes. That's not a bad idea, that. Except that loads of them haven't any mates. I'm afraid there aren't enough one-legged customers to make it a paying proposition. Well, what are they for, Rhoda? Oh, most of these are shoes that have been used in some act. Some of them are ones Blackstone has used, and others belong to other magicians, and the boss has collected them. Well, what's this pair of riding boots? What's the story on them? Oh, oh hi, Blackstone. Hello, Rhoda. Done? Oh, I see you're cleaning the shoe closet. Yes. Don was just asking about the riding boots. Tell him the story, Blackstone. Well, Don, high over the Hudson, there was a huge old-fashioned mansion. An old spinster had lived there until recently, but she died and left it to her nephew, Ben Rogers. One day, Sarah Jenkins, his aunt's old housekeeper, called him and asked him to come out. She was a good woman, Mr. Ben, and she meant well when she said I was to be allowed to live here till the old house was sold. She knew that this house was your home, Sarah, that you loved it. Well, as if tonight it ain't my home no more. What do you mean? I'm moving. But why? Well, there ain't nobody can make me stay one more night in this year house. Well, what's happened? What's happened? You've lived here for 35 years. Well, and... I never was one to hold with haunts, Mr. Ben. Haunts? You mean the house is haunted? Oh, come now. Well, I always said that ghosts was caused by something most folks had it before they went to bed. I always said that a sin on your soul could make you dream of ghosts. But I ain't got no sins, I think. And I eat light and sensible. Tell me more about it, Sarah. Well, it ain't fitting to discuss the supernatural, Mr. Ben. For somebody who doesn't believe in ghosts, you're letting a creaky board or whatever it is upset you terribly. Mr. Ben, I do believe in ghosts now. You mean you've seen something? I've seen plenty. I waked up in the night and I've heard footsteps. Footsteps are clumping up the stairs, a clumping around the halls. And then last night... Yes? Last night I was lying in my bed, and I seen a ray of moonlight playing on the carpet. And into the light, there came a pair of riding boots, high and shiny, with that moonlight a-glinting off the polish. But there weren't nobody wearing them at all. They was walking around on their own legs. You're sure of this? Oh, as sure as I'm sitting here talking to you, Mr. Ben. But there must be some explanation, Sarah. Well, that's what I don't want. That's why I'm getting out of this house that's been my home for so long. There's evil here, Mr. Ben, and it's walking the floors at night. I don't want no explanation of evil. You go into town and stay at my house tonight, and I'll stay here. I'll get to the bottom. I stayed there that night, Mr. Blackstone, and just as I was dropping off to sleep, I heard the steps coming up the stairs, just as Sarah said. And then I saw the boots. They were walking by themselves. You're sure of this? I'm positive. You're sure there wasn't a man dressed in black wearing those boots? A man you couldn't see in the darkness? There was moonlight, Mr. Blackstone. There was no one in those boots. Can you take me out to the house tonight? Uh, yes. I'll take you, but I certainly don't like the idea. <laughs> There's the house, Blackstone, silhouetted against the sky. Oh, gosh. It does look eerie against the moonlight, doesn't it? I thought you said the house was empty, Mr. Rogers. It is. Now Sarah's gone. Well, how do you account for that faint light seeping out of one of the windows in the upper story? Where? I don't see it. Right there, under the eaves. Oh, it's gone now. Is there a telephone at the house, Rogers? No, there isn't. Then I'd better stop at the next store. I have a call to make. Uh, there's a drugstore dead ahead. Good. I'll just be a moment. Here we are. Have you uh, got the flashlight, Rhoda? Yep, right here. I'll lead the way. Ooh. I've got a boost flash. There's something uncanny about walking into a house that we know is haunted. Sort of like asking for what we're going to get. Oh, come now, Rhoda. You're not afraid, are you? No, but I'm careful. I have the key here. Turn on your flash, Rhoda. Okay. Now, wait here, Rhoda. I'm expecting someone. Rogers, 
Will you show me the bedroom where you and Sarah saw the boots? It's up these stairs. Just uh, follow along after me. I uh, don't like being a reception committee for the spirit world. You're going to be the reception committee for someone very human indeed, Rhoda. Don't be scared. Oh, no. Oh, no. Rhoda Brent isn't scared. She's the brave type. Nothing ever scares her. Those teeth I hear belong to two other guys. Hey, that's not the right thing to say. There's nobody here but me and the ghost. Guess I better admit they're my teeth. Do ghosts have teeth? Well, well I'm hearing things. Oh, no, I'm imagining it. I know I am. I've got to be. They're coming closer. The footsteps. I hear them. Blackstone. Blackstone. Help. The walking boot. They're at the head of the stairs. They're walking toward me. They're coming down the stairs. Open up. Open up in there. It's the police. Open up in the name of the law. Well, don't stop there, Blackstone. Go on. What was it? Did Rhoda really see the boots, or did she imagine it? I certainly didn't. The boots were there, all right, Don. Yeah, but what made them walk? An old magician's trick. There was a track under the floor with an electromagnet on it. The shoes had bits of metal on the heels. They were attracted by the magnet. As it ran on the track, the boots seemed to walk. But why? Counterfeiters were using the attic of the house as their headquarters. And they were trying to scare Sarah Jenkins away so they could have the place to themselves. Well, how did the police get there? After I saw that light in the attic, I knew there must be some human being around. Remember that phone call I made? It was to the police. Why did you leave Rhoda alone, though, Blackstone? That could have scared her into the screaming memes. Well, what do you mean, could have? It did. Ben Rogers and I went upstairs to guard the entrance to the attic. I was afraid whoever was up there would come out shooting. And I didn't want her to get hurt. He figures it's worse to be shot than scared to death. Me, I'd rather be shot next time. It's less of a strain on the nerves. And so another mystery was solved by magic. Say, it looks like we're going to see a card trick this time, Blackstone. That's right. But first, I I want to pick the right card. Oh, now I've seen everything. A magician picking a card for himself. Oh, no, Rhoda. I'm picking the card for you. You mean I'm working the trick? Absolutely. I've taken a card, and I'm going to have you name it. Well, that sounds rather difficult. Well, we can let Don help you, and we'll do it in easy steps. Well, how do you mean, easy steps? Well, we'll start with the color first. There are two colors, red and black. Suppose I take black. Well, if you take black, that naturally leaves red, doesn't it? Of course. There are two red suits, hearts and diamonds. We'll let Don take one. Well, I'll take hearts. That leaves you diamonds. Now, some of the diamonds are picture cards and others are spot cards. One or the other must be eliminated. Which do we want? Pictures or spots? Well, let's say picture cards. Very well. We shall divide the picture cards into two pairs. Ace, king, and queen, jack. Now, which pair do you want, Don? The queen and the jack. All right, Rhoda. There you are. The queen and the jack. Which do you take? The queen or the jack? I'll take the queen. And the trick is done. That leaves the jack, and there it is. The very card I'm holding in my hand. Look at it, Rhoda. The jack of diamonds. Say, Blackstone, what did you do? Uh, Make us read your mind? Well, just about, Don. It was a good trick, wasn't it? Well, I'll say it was a good trick. I... I'm completely flabbergasted. Well, get yourself unflabbergasted, and I'll be back to tell you how easy it really is. Explaining that card trick, Blackthorn. It's very easy, Rhoda. It's just a case of take it or leave it. Well, first you have to take a card. That's right. You always take a picture card because that saves time. For instance, take the King of Spades. But you know the card and I don't. That's right. First, I ask you to pick a color. If you say black, we keep it. 
But if I say red, what then? Well, since you've taken red, that leaves black, doesn't it? I yes. So I ask Don to take a suit. And I take the spades. Good. That gives us spades. But if you had said clubs, Don, it would leave us spades. Oh, now I'm beginning to get it. Then you do the same thing with picture cards and spot cards. If you say picture cards, we keep them. If you take spot cards, we eliminate them. And that gives us two pairs of picture cards. The Ace King and the Queen Jack. And whichever you take, we keep the right pair. In this case, the Ace and King. Uh, I ask you to take one. And if I take the Ace, that leaves you with the King right there in your hand. Exactly. But if you take the King, I hand you the card and I say... You took the king, and now you have it. And there's a trick that everybody can do the first time they try. I hope you like that trick, ladies and gentlemen. And until next time, this is Blackstone saying good magic and goodbye. Be with us next time when the world's greatest living magician, Blackstone, tells us the story of the voodoo treasure and explains more tricks that you yourself can perform. Listen in again to Blackstone, the world's greatest living magician.